Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 21 of Road to Colonization. And we start landing a booster we launched last time to, I think, just launch like a fueling thing to the uh, Concordia or something like that. But yeah, we're going to bring this back now. And the nice thing about this is it was bring a fairly light payload, so it's kind of got a bunch of extra equipment because it had a bunch of kind of free mass. So it has air brakes and thrusters. You saw just then I was turning it. Um, with the thrusters, which makes it much easier. Now we're just kind of burning up a little bit, hoping those air brakes will slow us down. And then we get ourselves a landing. After quite a few engine burns, we uh, managed to pinpoint our landing to right in the vicinity of the KSC. Now that's number two on the on the grass at the KSC. This is actually a little further away, by like maybe 200 meters. But um, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm getting pretty good at landing these nice and close to the KSC now, which is quite good. Anyway, back in space. Um, this uh, We're at the Concordia. And uh, this little piece of equipment, this lander, which was perfect for Duna, will not be coming on the EVE mission because, well, the e we're not landing on EVE. I um, mean, it would be useless for landing on EVE, uh, obviously. Be well, it could land on EVE, but it couldn't take off from EVE. Um, and it would be useless for landing on Gilly because Gilly is far too, uh, you know, the gravity is far too low. So we're going to just send this over to Odin Station, which is my space station, which I haven't really done much with this series, um, except store fuel in it. And it does actually have a rocket factory on it. Maybe I should do something with that. That would be really cool. Um, it's more of a test bed than anything else. I might send a rocket factory somewhere else. But anyway, yeah, this is going to go and dock there and maybe just be a spare utility vehicle, or maybe I'll recycle it for parts or bring it home or something like that. But yeah, it's going to take a little while to get there, so we'll just set up this little maneuver here um, to kind of figure out where we'll be in a bunch of orbits times and do a bit of a tweak, and uh, all should be good. Um, yeah, so that'll be, I think, in like a day. So we've got many other things to be doing in that time, like launching the EVE crew. Yes, this is the crew. There is Jeb, Bill, Bob, and Valentina. The big four are going to EVE. We uh, let uh, we let um, Jeb off for uh, having a private company. Turns out, you know, those were useful parts. It's cool. We're okay. Um, so yes, we're launching him on an Ares 5. Yes, it's a new launch. Well, it's the same launch vehicle. It's a new capsule. Um, it holds just as many people as the Ares 3, which was the uh, Dragon 2 type spacecraft. But it's just more functional. It has more powerful engines. It doesn't have the annoying fairing. It maneuvers better. It's lighter. And just, yes, yeah, generally a better vehicle. Should be better at landing, more easily reusable, that kind of thing. Because the Dragon 2, while it looked kind of cool, did have a lot of trouble landing. Mostly due to the kind of low thrust engines. But this is using a couple of those little... Um, like vector swivel engines, I think they're called. No, um, well, anyway, whatever they're called, you know, like that's the radial ones that swivel quite a lot, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, and it doesn't really carry any supplies, it just carries seven Kerbals, but we're only uh, carrying up four because um, we only really need more than that on a more complicated mission where we was maybe landing on Duna and Ike, like the last Concordia mission, but we will just be landing on Gilly and orbiting Eve, so yeah. So we've deployed it now, and we're just uh, getting ready to maneuver into the Concordia so that we can, well, go and dock, deposit the crew, and then send this and the rocket home. We've got to do a bit of a plane change, of course. Concordia came in a bit of, at a bit of an angle um, from uh, from Duna, but uh, all is good, and here we are, arriving at the front of the craft, looking rather beautiful from above. You can see the two spacecraft, the two kind of landers on the side sticking out. We're going to have to move one of them, but that'll just be the task of one of the pilots. I could have sent three Kerbals on this mission, but I thought it would be useful to have two uh, pilots, because while one is going to Gilly, it would be good to have another pilot on Concordia, just in case. Um, but anyway, we're going to get our crew out now, put Jeb in the command module, Bill in the science lab, um, Bob in the just, uh, like, habitation thing, and Valentina in the lander so that she can move it around the spacecraft. Now I was actually going to send some less experienced people, to uh, less experienced Kerbals to EVE, but I reckon, well it's nice to send the big four places because, you know, it's boring having them just around Kerbin, and also they'll get more experience. They're, they're, um, Bill and Bob are three star experience, and uh, Jeb and Val are four star experience, so it would be nice to bump that up to five, so we have like maximally experienced pilots, which would be good, because you know, they're the big four, they're the badasses, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, here I'm just doing a bit of a quick save, you can see as I'm maneuvering on the front of the docking port, there was just some like fairing, but that's gone now because it was just kind of visual. Um, and yeah, I'm just doing a fairly slow maneuver, this is of course four times time accelerate, because I like to do these maneuvers quite slowly. But yeah, we just need to get onto the other side of the spacecraft. I'm starting to like how this lander looks, it does look super janky, but I kind of like it with the fuel tank above it, it just, I don't know, 
I just, yeah, I just quite like it. So we're going to deposit it on this docking port so that hopefully this is a fairly balanced spacecraft. It doesn't have to be perfect because, of course, the vector engine gimbals. It has a reaction wheel. It should be able to um, hold itself in the right orientation. And we put Val in the cockpit. Anyway, now we need to bring back the rocket. Um, this is, of course, the... Pulsar X. It does look a little different because it has an adapter on top where the air brakes and thrusters are um, because it just needed to mate with the uh, Ares vehicle. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to bring it back. I'm also going to try not deploying those fairings around the uh, top. Usually that means you're going a little bit too fast and it was true here, but the air brakes slowed me down enough and we do manage to land fairly close to the KSC, very close actually, within 25 kilometers. So that's, yeah, pretty good. We're getting good at pinpointing these... Uh, these landings and it touches down gently. Anyway, though, uh, we will need to be bringing back the uh, crew, the crew spacecraft as well. Um, that's going to head back to Kerbin to be recovered. Um, so we do our deorbit burn and re-enter and all of that stuff because, well, uh, we again won't need this on Eve. Um, more the least, the less mass we can take with us, the better, because that'll mean we'll have more delta V to do various things. And yes, we have a bit of a re-entry. The heat shield holds up nicely, and the engines also hold up fairly well. And then it kind of comes down and lands again, very close to the KSC. It's a little bit um, south because of the inclination of uh, the Concordia, but yeah, again, kind of. Still pretty close. If it had been a normal inclination, we would have probably landed right at the launch pad. So that's yeah, pretty good. Anyway, uh, the, here's the lander from the Concordia earlier. Um, a much older looking lander, of course. It's fairly basic. The new lander we've sent to Duna is far more advanced and just generally looks nicer. But this is still a useful piece of kit. Obviously, it's fairly similar technology. Um, just looks a little older. But yeah, this could be useful maybe for moon missions or just uh, as a space tug. Or again, there is a part that allows me to recycle this into rocking, uh, rocket parts. Rocking parts. Um, and yeah, I could use those parts in that little blue thing up there, the workshop, to create new things. Um, and I might use that a little more. But again, that was more just a test. This wasn't really supposed to be a rocket factory. Um, but anyway, now we just need to get rid of this little adapter that allowed us to fuel from the fuel shuttle. And we are ready to go. Yes, everything is set up. The Concordia is ready. And now we have our maneuver laid in to get uh, right rear close to Eve. And uh, yeah, we're going to activate the uh, vector engine, which gives us a nice kick of thrust, which allows us to escape uh, Kerbin in one burn. Um, it will burn out halfway through. It doesn't provide a lot of delta V, but it gets us into a nice high orbit. Um, and allows the nuclear engines to carry on fairly easily. So yes, yeah, so we're going to go about two minutes before the um, two minutes before the burn. It'll look like I need a lot less time than that, but the vector engine will flame out about halfway through because uh, it doesn't provide much delta V, as I've said. Um, but it is just nice and useful to have. So yes, we are heading to Eve. Actually, the only the second planet um, that, well, so I guess technically because Kerbin, the third planet. Uh, Kerbals will visit. Um, we haven't been to Eve yet. We've sent probes and landers, which all exploded. Um, but yeah, this should be this should be pretty cool. Um, it's always nice to send Kerbals there. I would have loved to land on Eve, of course, uh, but you know, it was not to be. All of my vehicles exploded, and I didn't want to send an untested vehicle um, to take Kerbals somewhere. But yes, um, I guess uh, after after Eve, really, um, I'm gonna start preparing for. Uh, for a dual mission, we have a window maybe coming up, but it doesn't really matter. It's never there, never the lap that long between dual windows. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm thinking that I probably will send a pretty big colony ship to uh, to dual because it's going to be such a long mission um, that we're going to need to send a you know a big ship there. And I think it's really we're going to do a lot of stuff. Our probe still hasn't gotten there, so we haven't explored it. But I am going to start preparing for the mission. And we're going to build a really nice big spacecraft. And I'm going to try and make it look, you know, fairly nice. Um, I like how the Concordia looks. I'm not massive, a massive fan of how the uh, Canterbury around uh, Duna came out. But yeah, it will be bigger than the Canterbury. It will be more of a colony ship than a freighter. And I think it should be pretty cool. But anyway, that is all for the future. Right now we are just finishing off our burn, getting down to the, um, getting down to the, altitude of Eve and it looks like we've slightly overburned and this will require actually quite a bit of tweaking. So we'll have to um, obviously null our inclination um, like that. Uh, I actually think did, uh, did that a little bit too much but yeah and then a bit of a prograde, bit of a um, normal burn, just basically fish around until we get ourselves uh, an encounter. Uh, this does take me a while because I have overburned or maybe just burned in the slightly wrong place 
But after a little bit of tweaking and getting the inclination right and doing the right burn, we get ourselves our own counter, and then we just need to pull it down nice and close to E. We're going to want to go right on the other side so that we're in the same uh, orbital direction as the spin of the planet and, of course, Gilly. And that's looking good. Um, we're going to add an alarm for that, which will happen fairly soon, actually, and get a nice shot of us leaving Kerbin. Ah, there we go. Uh, the Kerbal's heading out again after just 70 days on Kerbin. They barely live there anymore. They spend their life actually in the Concordia. They've only ever been in that ship. Huh, maybe they would have liked to have been in the Canterbury because it's much bigger, but still. Anyway, while that's happening, we have a few things to do around Kerbin, and one of them is to complete our mission to um, fill up our space station with ore. Uh, which, you know, it's it's, it's going to pay out pretty well, and we've been working on it for a while, but it's, it's a side mission. Um, but yeah, we've got another load of ore now, so we're going to head up to, I think it's just still called Minmus Station 2, because I have to name so many spacecraft in this that sometimes I just don't. Um, and it's, you know, just an industrial station. Um, so we take off, but I realize for some reason the... Uh, the, the spacecraft was uh, controlling from something on the side of the spacecraft, so I have to quickly switch that so I can actually head up into orbit um, to meet the station. Uh, yeah, that was really weird. It was controlling from it was from something on the side. I don't really... I don't know what that was about, but uh, yeah. I'm just going to also try and flatten out my velocity on the ascent burn so I don't have to do it later. Um, apparently, I hear it's better to kind of stack burns um, because, uh, you know, do them uh, all in one. So if you're going to do an inclination change and a prograde, um, burn. You're supposed to kind of do them in one burn because it uh, costs less delta V because of something to do with Pythagoras. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that does make sense to me, but yeah. Anyway, so that's done, and now we're in the same plane and altitude. Now we just need to do a prograde burn so that we'll meet it around the other side of the orbit. And yeah, just got to do some time warping now, get around, meet the station, and uh, dock on. I think this is the second to last one I'll need to do for this. But now we are at the station, so we're just going to burn towards it and do a bunch of stuff, but you know, you don't want to see all of that because it takes ages, because I'm very methodical and slow with these kind of things. But yes, we get ourselves nicely lined up and we'll dock. But as I was saying, we'll only have to do one more of these after this so that we can uh, fill up the station and uh, yeah, we should have all of the ore that we need. I also actually have a mission to extract 600 units of ore from Minmus, so I think I'll complete that next time as well. So we're going to uh, make a bunch of money from this because it was quite an expensive operation to set up, so it would be nice to do that. But anyway, we better head right back to uh, right back to Minmus now so that we can, well, so that, you know, we can start mining again. We want to get this done quickly, probably next episode. Um, and then probably arrive at Eve next episode. I don't know. There's not too much else to be doing now. Um, just doing the missions, doing the things. Um, so yes, uh, now we're just getting all lined up. Do a quick retrograde burn. It still it is nice to have that um, marker down there. That uh, we left a probe down there that brought some parts for this to allow it to dock to a station. And it is yeah, just really useful to have that so I know where I need to land. It will be in the dark, but of course now we have ambient light enhancement mod, which uh, is great. We've discovered the technology to see in the dark. It came after the discovery that this is all just a simulation on someone's computer. Some crazy man making money, just playing video games and, and, and talking about crazy things like simulated universes. Oh man, I really hope that's not what I am. Just some game on a YouTube channel. Um, if they are, then they should really send me some money through, I guess, inter-universe in, inter PayPal. Is that how it works? Well, I guess if they have their computer, they can do what they want. So yeah, um, <laughs> if I'm a simulation, I want to get paid, is what I'm saying. Anyway, enough of my craziness, my tinfoil hattery. Although, when you just kind of consider the um, simulated universe thing, it actually makes quite a lot of sense, you know? It's just like, yeah, probably. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but anyway, now we're going to go and land on Minmus and forget that we're probably just, uh, it's all just a lie. <laughs> but anyway, yes, yeah, so now we're touching down fairly close to the probe. Doesn't really matter where we land because we are the miner. We can do what we want. We are the one who mines. Oh, I guess I am the one who mines would make sense. Um, yeah, I'm rewatching Breaking Bad, so I guess that's on my mind. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we just need to warp today so that there is sunlight. And which takes a while, but we get a nice shot of the sky passing. Then the sun rises in the op just not even slightly where I was expecting it to. I guess I did got myself kind of disorientated. We rotate the spacecraft so that we can, uh, you know, uh, get enough power to mine some ore. Apparently this explodes, which is kind of annoying, or gets stuck in the ground. I don't really know. Maybe it's quicksand. Maybe that's what Minmus is made of. Quick, Or maybe if, if it is kind of mint ice cream, then you would sink into mint ice cream. 
But the next thing we have to do, well, one of the second to the last thing we have to do today is uh, throw this uh, this fuel shuttle onto Odin Station. So here we are arriving at it. I thought I'd spare you the maneuvering because it's been a fairly maneuvering heavy episode today. Um, so yeah, we flip around, we get under, and then we're just going to dock onto that docking port and so that we can store this here just so the Kerbals won't run out of life support because I may forget about them and we don't want them to asphyxiate to death because, well, they're very useful to me. They are my uh, fuel shuttle guys. They're basically space truckers. Um, yeah, that'd be a good job. I kind of feel like trucker would be a fun job. You just get a driver, but only in America because, um, like, it's much cooler in America. You have cooler-looking trucks. You have just open roads. In Britain, it's just driving lorries through towns. You know, that's just got to be difficult. But in America, you got the open road, you got a big truck, you just, like, have a radio, you know what's going on on the roads. Yeah. I think that's my backup plan. I have, like, 50 backup plans, so I think I'm good if this whole computing thing doesn't work out. You know, if this uh, internet thing isn't really around to stay. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we're docked on there. Apparently, I'm just not even talking about the game anymore. Um, but yes, anyway... Now we have uh, the final launch of the episode, and this is a new rocket. This is the Starlight 2. It's like the Starlight 1, but it has two engines, and it has a much better lifting capability, and it's just generally more easy for reuse. Yes, we are um, building new rockets occasionally, and I just wanted to build this because it's fun. I could have put this payload on top of a Pulsar X, but it's always nice to have a new rocket, and I like the two-engine kind of look. There is a rocket in real life, I forget the name, that has like two engines kind of like this, and I really like how that looks. But anyway, we ditched that first stage now uh, at a pretty good altitude. It was a pretty st uh, steep launch trajectory just so that um, the booster wouldn't fall into the atmosphere before I can get to it. And yeah, we decoupled the fairings, but the nose cone kind of sticks to the spacecraft, which is super annoying. Um, but yeah, this is basically just an ISRU, um, which is going to head to the Minmus station and will be docked on there. Um, will allow me, because I'm putting so much ore on this Minmus station, and initially I was just going to leave it there. But it's so much free fuel, which I'll be able to get so quickly with the um, with the fuel shuttle without having to land on Minmus. So I thought I might as well go fetch it. Um, anyway, now we've got to land this uh, first stage, see how it stands up. It is a little, it is quite a bit bigger than the uh, Pulsar X. Uh, not the Pulsar X, the um, Starlight 1, but it has two engines. It's only using this, it's still using the same amount of fuel to land, but it doesn't need that much. And you can see we get a velocity low-ish enough to pull the parachutes, hopefully, uh, just in time. And then we're going to touch down gently on the water with a little bit of fuel we have left. And yeah, it still lands with the parachutes and engines. It's just much easier um, to do that than, like, try and hover slam. But yes, now we touch down very gently. Those two engines looking rather beautiful. And uh, this is coming to the end of the episode. You can see this now in all its glory. It's basically just an ISRU. Um, I should have put radiators on it now. I realized that. I forgot radiators. I'll have to ship up some sep- Oh no! I think the space station may have radiators, so we might be good. But yeah, this will just convert all of that ore into glorious, nice, lovely fuel. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I hope you'll come back for the next episode. I know that it's been a while between episodes. I've got a lot of stuff going on right now, um, which is- yeah, just, yeah, so there's a few things getting in the way, but um, everything's cool, and hopefully it won't be like, I think like 11 or 12 days between this episode and next, as it was last time. But yes, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this, and this has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.